everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. Now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. Sports talk, Danny Tierhar sitting in for the mayor. Uh, is this your one shot this week, or are you going to yeah, be back? Yeah, it's, it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. <laughs> it was all or nothing. We were, uh, the jury's still out. We don't know if we're going to have him back yet or not. Okay. I gave it everything I had. Oh, well, that's good. Hey. Two, two tough hours of work. I don't know how he does it every day. Uh, Me? I don't you know? know either. Oh. <laughs> He, uh, the, I think the most fun he ever had was when he's doing four hours, though, right? You guys did four for quite a few years. Two to you? six. We were talked into two oh, to six. Man. And yeah. you know what? That one, I, uh-huh. I don't know how Judd and Mackey do it. I would not wish that on anybody. Mm-hmm. Two to six well, was the most difficult. Well, they do it by being difficult. repetitive. So that's it. So that's it. <laughs> oh, that's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> Going after other coworkers, right? Uh, Stuff like that. Yeah, all right. That's oh. right. They'll, they do it by being uh Repetitive. Any reports from Alabama? Has God checked in yet? Oh, uh, still with, waiting. Uh, Roy Moore has got. He's still waiting for here from God. The horse does not have a rider yet. <laughs> still, uh, he can't saddle up yet until uh, he gets the call yeah, from God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. poor Roy. What's he going to do Roy. now? Uh, I'm sure he's going to probably make uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars speaking at uh, various right-wing mm-hmm. outlets yes. around the country about the evil media. That Mostly got in the South. The media, <laughs> evil uh, Democrats had got him. But you know what? I'm so proud of Alabama, I don't care if they win another national football championship. <laughs> That's fine with me. That is fine with me. I uh, I would not have. But uh, I, I guess I was surprised uh, because uh, I just figured they'd... W- what you do... You know when you get when you do polling, and and people are embarrassed by Ray, Roy Moore, mm-hmm. they then don't tell you the truth. Right. When you do the pregame polling, they tell you, "Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna." Mm-hmm. Vote. What do you I, think you want to hear? I'm not gonna. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I haven't made up my mind yet. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was amazing though. It is. Uh, I can see why uh, both really fanatical sides of the I'll go crazy watching sport uh, watching TV news networks so. mm-hmm. though. Oh, for uh, sure. I mean it's uh it's uh I I don't know if it's an NBC gal MS NBC gal or a uh uh or a CNN, CNN gal. Uh and but she was she was so giddy last night and about the Trump uh mm. harassment charges <laughs> uh I think she accused him of rape, I heard that word, which I, I don't know where that went. And even the guy hosting, I can't remember what it was, that Don, I think it was, so it must have been CNN. I think he said, now where, where'd you hear that one, you know, or something <laughs> well, like that. So they heard it somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there was, it a... was, but, and then the, uh, the spin from the Fox people was uh, fantastic. Too. Fair and balanced. Yeah, fair of course it is. There was a time when I didn't, I just didn't pay attention to that much to uh-huh. politics, and it, and I wish I could go back to that because yeah. now I'm I'm ruined. I can't watch. <laughs> I can't watch the news because something. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, They're it. spinning that way out of con- and and once you know, it's really hard to watch. Yeah, and uh, you well, know. it was always it was tough to watch George Stephanopoulos be very. Um, middle of the road when you knew that he had his ties to Hillary. Yeah. That was but that he, was a little yeah, slip. If he came back, he would be middle of the road. If he came back, <laughs> oh, now, George, yeah. by, by comparison, right. yes, he would be. Uh, but it was, uh, it. Uh, I've never seen an off-year election. How about Charles Barkley? I saw, I heard, I listened to Charles called in to CNN to express his joy. And this is from a guy who about, 10 years ago, said he was going to run for governor as a Republican. He was one of America's uh, 
uh, more prominent uh, black Republicans, but he, uh, he 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 is so good, so smart. He said, uh, you know, he basically was on one of the news networks, and he said, the news networks, they aren't that interested in who wins down here. They they all want Roy Moore to win, so we look like idiots. <laughs> he said they want Al- they want Alabama yeah. people to look like idiots. He said so. He said the main reason, well, he didn't like Ray, Roy Moore for the obvious reasons, but but he said the main reason is that he doesn't want Alabama people to look like idiots, which is what they, uh, you know, he said. And he's, you know, he cuts through the BS better than anybody. He's pretty good at that. He oh, yeah. is, yeah, because yeah. he doesn't care. No, there, there's a few, very few people out there who uh, just don't give a damn. If you one don't way or care what people think about you, yes, there's a little freedom there. Yeah, there's there a little, is. Uh, he is. Uh, he is. Uh, What's that like, Patrick? At it. Well, you know, <laughs> that's you know, I I would never say that I'm as. Uh, eh, I'm as thick skinned as Charles, <laughs> but I'm close. I'm close. I don't care, but uh, not like Charles because. Charles doesn't have the governor on him, you know, like the right. He says he got she got less chance than the black girl on the Bachelor. On the bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's where is he? I, I told yeah, it, it's somewhere. Get ready, right here, right here. They got no chance. Eighteen and oh, they're, like, they're like the black girl on the Bachelor. Let's they see. got no chance. <laughs> <laughs> The other, uh, the other great thing is when he makes fun of San Antonio gals, you know, <laughs> and he's, oh yeah, it's funny. He still could get away with that in this in these sensitive times, but whenever they mention San San Antonio on that show, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I got some bad girls down there. <laughs> he is great, but I, I've told this story uh, several times, quite a few times actually. But I was covering the Dream Team in '92 when they were in San Diego, at uh, and they. The NBA is so great with the media. They put us in the same ho- They put the media in the same hotel as the players. The Tory, the Sheraton on Tory Pines. Michael Jordan had the room across the hall for me. It, it appeared to be a little larger, but a little bit uh, nicer than your room. The hall, Slightly but, All right. across the hall. But I, uh, Silas McKinney, used to be Clem's assistant coach, and he was a Alabama guy, and he was a big. He was a buddy of Charles. Because I think he actually tried to buy him for South Alabama when he went to Auburn. <laughs> but at, at that, anyway, I ran into Silas. I walked in. I saw Silas sitting at the bar there. So I walked over and said hello. And he says, hey, Charles is coming down if you want to say hello to him. So I went upstairs and came back down. And Charles came down. And they sat there for about 45 minutes and had cocktails and told stories. And I just sat and listened to him. But when Charles is leaving, this guy comes over and says something to him. And there's a fella in... Like he looked like he lifelong birth defects. You know, he looked like he was had 20, some issues. Twenty five, but he was in a wheelchair. Okay, and in very bad, yeah. very bad shape. And the guy wanted uh, Charles to come over and talk to him, or just say hello to him. Charles sat down, talked to the kid for forty five, talked to the guy for forty five minutes. Jeez, so wow, he's, uh, that shows you when he's behind and, the scenes. Yeah, and then Brian McIntyre, who's the was the PR, the great PR guy for the NBA. I told him that story. He says. Best guy we got. Really? Best guy we got, Charles. Wow. But but, it's if, probably... you, but if you're in the stands and you're going to say <laughs> something to him, he's going to give you the cross he's coming back. back in the day. He's coming back. Yeah. And he, he punched the guy in Milwaukee. You know, the yeah, guy came yeah. up and gave him a, you know, kind of came up, made yeah. a threatening gesture to him in the Skyway in Milwaukee, and he dropped him right boom. That's what right Charlie, there. he said, I don't I don't want bodyguards. I want to beat him up all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have no bodyguards. I want to beat him up all by myself. It was a long time ago that he said that, but that's yes. hilarious. Oh, he's the greatest. All right, we'll be back. This is uh, Sports Talk. These are the holidays. By the way, the uh, sports auction, big success yesterday. And uh, I got to say, Ravers wasn't here when you were around, Dan, but he's an interesting cat. And sometimes his ideas don't turn out as well as he'd hoped. Okay? <laughs> oh, I hate right. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he came up with the idea of we can sell a ride with Ricey uh appearance and then if if it's an uh an amateur town team baseball game oh. then we can go do the game there too we can go do okay. the show and then do the game and he, i said are you sure about this you sure anybody will bid anything they don't for have this? any money 
So about 435 yesterday, our biggest bid was still $500 from the Fairbowl Lakers. Ooh. The team that I run. With the Reavers. Uh, with the Reavers run. Uh, yeah. The and team I didn't kept, quite know they donated I kept, it yet. I kept giving him that <laughs> lance, you know. I was getting the Roycey snub, yeah. and I was doing a show with him. We ended up with a $4,500 <laughs> bid from Wasika to have the uh, Tink Larson. Wow. And we also had another bid of uh, the same type of bid to have it, uh, the show someplace else. So we made uh, nine yeah. grand. Dang, dang near nine good. grand wow. on, those, Hell yeah. uh, nice. on those two bids. Dan, to say I was puckered at about yes. 4 30 <laughs> would be an understatement. A little tight yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah. Albert Brooks yeah. flop sweat going mm-hmm. with the water was just dripping but, down his uh, forehead we will uh it sounds like we'll be there to when they take larson field rededication they, they, you know they yeah. had the arson yeah. down there and they burn the right, field down right. and they build it up and they rebuild it and they're going to dedicate the new ballpark and i think we'll be down there for that so that'll be fun town ball Nothing and we like made it. some money for courage kenny yeah. that's good how the food at Wasika? They got any decent food? You know, I don't know what their signature meal is. Uh, Throw a nice uh, brat. They'll have good uh, brats there for you. I was hoping the Jordan people bid because I we oh, like the those pork burgers. Good food. We yeah. like those pork burgers. Pretty good brats at Dundas. Had a few of those oh, in my day. Oh, they're all. Uh, uh, plus, they're what's all the around. meat market in du- in uh, Jordan? Pacarnas. Pacarnas. Yes. Okay. One of the highlights of my life. Twenty well, years ago. Twenty years ago, I'm driving Sid back from Mankato, and we stopped. And we walk in, and everybody says, hello, Patrick. Sid was, Sid was very offended. But nobody nobody greeted him because he didn't know that I'd sh- shopped there when oh, I lived in Prior Lake oh, for okay. 20 years. <laughs> hello, Patrick. Nobody says a word to Sid. Oh, he was very offended. Oh, that's not good. All right. We'll be back. <laughs> Derek Felby on MLB.com right now. I hope we're capturing the quotes. I'm sure they're hot ones. He does spew the hottest oh, takes when man. he's on he's, camera. Uh, he's got every cliche. He's got every uh, Ivy League cliche knowing the man, <laughs> doesn't he? He's not a bad guy, but he doesn't say anything. The other guy is uh, fine. He's a he's Thad Levine. He's okay, but uh, this guy. We're hot uh, after you is what I'm reading. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, what the hell? 150? Will they give him 150? It's going to cost more than that, don't you think? Uh, five years, 150 Wow. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I don't know. We've had such good success with uh, Asian <laughs> players lately, though. That would be good. Although this would be this would be a plunge like they've never made, that's for sure. How about the fact that Otani has a UCL tear and is a pitching elbow? Did he? We, we, they, they say that they told him everybody, told everybody that. They did. I had a time. Oh, and the Indians and the Angels still got it. Yeah, they told that it was in the documents that they sent to all the teams. And they, I suppose the theory is he can either pitch or he can. This is supposedly a UCLA tear like uh, Tanaka has that he can pitch with it. Yeah, who wants to they pitch, with, pitch a tear? with it? Any kind of tear. See you later. Well, that's what yeah. Tanaka's pitched with his. Tanaka's pitched with his, uh, you know, ligament problem and. And uh, uh, I, I don't know if it's how serious this one is considered, but they I suppose they figure he can hit if he doesn't pitch, so he's still worth it, right? Yeah, probably. That's uh, that's the deal. So I don't know. Winter meetings I covered. How many have I covered? Six or seven. Back in the days when we didn't have 24-hour news cycle, mm-hmm. right? And you knew Calvin wasn't going to. I knew Calvin wasn't going to do anything anyway. <laughs> so basically... You'd go down to the press room about 11 in the morning and say, boys, let's make a trade. (laughs) You get a few other writers to make the trade with you, and then you'd say, hot rumors taking place. Uh, Then you'd write that. Then you'd go drink lunch. Then you'd come back and see if anything actually happened. And then you'd uh, write something for the afternoon paper and uh, get out of Dodge. And then on... uh, Thursday, I believe, is when they had the Rule 5 draft when you took a minor leaguer. And Calvin always would take a minor Rule 5 minor leaguer, so then you'd have to write about this non-entity who had no chance to make the team anyway. (laughs) And uh, that was about it. You'd go down there, spent the newspaper's money for about five days, and produce absolutely nothing. You only did six or seven of them? Six or seven. I figured yeah, well, you'd done I, No, I know I was the beat guy from, I was the only beat guy five years. Oh, okay. 74 through eight, and then I went to a, Maybe three or four others, but 
I quit drinking at 81. I went to a couple of them sober, and it was no fun at all. No. There's nothing going on. <laughs> <laughs> nothing going on, you know? You, I mean, you just sit around and have to write actual stuff, and there's no stuff to write. I can't remember ever having been there with uh, uh, when the Twins made a big move. I can't remember. They made some in the off season, but none of them, I think. Wow, there were a lot, though. None of the thing were at the winter meetings, I think. But the highlight was Calvin's birthday. Oh. Party, dinner would always fall during the winter meetings. So, and we'd get, the writers would get invited. We'd sit down at the end oh, of the, the good table. good old days. End of the table, but we'd get invited, and Calvin would, the whole family would be there, and everybody else that went to the winter meetings, and... Uh, and uh, it was it was always quite a uh, uh, so and it was a Calvin might have been cheap when it came to signing ball players, but he wasn't cheap when he picked out the ref- restaurant for his birthday party. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Did he have a home down there in uh, Orlando? Later on, he had a condo in Melbourne uh, over yeah. there where they had the minor league complex. But uh, but he didn't. Uh, he never had anything in Orlando, and the tra- Twins never. Trained in Fort Myers when he was they they trained in Orlando from the 1930s until they moved in 1991. So, but uh, yeah. Tinker Field, right? Tinker Field. Tinker Field. What mm-hmm. a hellhole! Were you ever down there? <laughs> no, not to Tinker. Um, no. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. They had one and a half fields. They had an infield, and then you know now they got like six or seven right. fields. They had an infield, and then they, which they called EO EO for EO Jima because okay. it was so hard. And so many rocks, and and then they had the regular field, and that was it. And then the minor leaguers were way over in Melbourne, which was two two and a half hours away. So, wow, and the, the minor leaguers has changed. The minor leaguers took over an old hotel at the Melbourne Airport. The Melbourne Airport was like flying cloud, and they took over this old hotel and slept them. If you were in the low minors, four to a room. Oh, wow. no. They'd have beds. Oh. Beds. Boom, 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 boom. Well, at least you got in. your own bed. Yeah, but sort of. But there was no wow. space. No room for error. No room, no room at the end, as we <laughs> no, say. Can you no. imagine the state? If you roll oh over, you might grab something you didn't want to. Oh. Right? Oh. Or you did want to. Right? Where's your hand? Imagine. Between two pillows. <laughs> oh. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, dabo was the worst. It was uh, it was unbelievable the way they uh, they treated minor leaguers then compared to now. Yeah, because you know now they they got a dorm there with uh, hundred. Ah, it's nice now. For hundred, yeah. it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. All righty, John Height with a uh, update on all things sports, news, weather, and whatever else. We got. Yeah. Not Thanks. traffic, though. Stay away from traffic. We got a traffic guy. We got a guy. We got a guy. Yeah. Don't touch that. Cloudy. No. Cloudy at 24 degrees. Uh, the Twins signing righty Michael Pineda today. Uh, he signs a two-year deal worth $10 million bucks. He'll get $2 million for 2018, $8 million for 2019. The reason for that, uh, he uh, had Tommy John surgery earlier this year. He won't pitch in the upcoming season. When did it uh, pop on him? Because he was pitching good for the Yankees this year, right? Yeah, he was 8-4. and four, uh, mm-hmm. July, I believe, mm-hmm. is when he had okay. the... Uh, the uh, problem. So I see Reavers flashing his uh, computer to you. What well, uh, d- there's been a. Uh, maybe we should do this now, as long as uh, we brought. Do you it just up. want me to read yeah, this, Johnny? Okay. Yep. Uh, thank you, Kenny, for the heads up on this. Police and paramedics are responding to a shooting on the Penn State campus. Uh, 911 authorities say that at least two people have been shot. There's no word on their condition. There are reports. Mike of, says both are dead. Both this are is dead. From KDKA. There are reports of up to 15 shots fired, and multiple ambulances have been called to the scene. The shooting happened on campus, but officials aren't saying which building the shooting took place in. The school is now on lockdown near hmm. the bistro. Thank you. Yep, that's that's all the information I have. Okay. So, wow. uh, more on that, obviously. That uh, seems up. like a peaceful place. I've been up there now. Uh, we had Jerry roaming around there, so that was something. But. Uh, uh, that's unfortunate. Viking coach Mike Zimmer said today he thinks the Vikings should get ailing lineman Pat Elfline and Mike Remmers back for Sunday. And he says there's a possibility Riley Reef might come back. Remmers is getting over a back injury. Elfline, the center, had a shoulder injury and Reef hurt his ankle in this past Sunday's game. So I did a column for tomorrow on Jeremiah uh, uh, Searles, the uh the utility man, the the lineman that they have from Nebraska, yeah. who's uh, he'll play either tackle, either guard, 
And I was I was talking to him. I said, "Hey, uh, Andre Smith is coming back to town." And uh, Andre Smith is the kid from uh, that was the guy was here last year and was kind of a failure, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Andre Smith, uh, I said he's coming back to town. He said, "We got Andre Smith back." <laughs> I said, no, he's with the Bengals. He says, oh, yeah, that's right. He, thought, he said, I haven't seen him. So uh, he uh, he was a little confused there, and I might have confused him because I didn't actually ask him a question. I made a statement. So. As long as we were talking twins, uh, Chris just saw an item that the <laughs> Marlins have released Edison Volquez, who was, what, about 1 in 15 last year? Oh, my oh God. he'd fit in good here. <laughs> Marlins are, uh, they're, uh, they're cleaning house. They're cleaning mm -hmm. house. They, earlier today, I don't know if you saw. Well, they probably tried to trade Edison, and nobody wanted him. They uh, did trade Ozuno this afternoon, yes. apparently, to the Cardinals. And what did they get from the Redbirds? There's uh, nothing concrete yet, I don't believe. They got the did pitcher Alcantara. Oh, you did see something. And they right. got a couple of other prospects, too. But Alcantara mm -hmm. was the pitching prospect that they got in return. Nobody the in the guess. history of sports has... Turned from, yay, Derek Jeter bought the team to bring back Jeff Loria. <laughs> There's they, also a uh, story that the uh, Illich is also now on the block, too. Although they, uh, earlier they said they'd keep one of them. Perhaps now they won't well, keep Well, they any went of to Yelich and said, uh, Do you want it? these? The three guys they traded are all his pals. Yeah. And they said, You know, he said, Get me the hell out of here, too. So <laughs> they're going to try to uh, trade him, too. <laughs> News notes from today. Governor Mark Dayton has announced the selection of Lieutenant Governor Tina Smith to fill Boo! the U.S. Senate Boo! seat that will be left vacant when Al Franken's resignation is finalized. What kind of dramatic policies does she have? Right. What does she think about bike lanes? You does know she want to get rid of them? Just a puppet. <laughs> yes, she is. Just a <laughs> left-wing <a> puppet. puppet. <laughs> I'm a left-wing non-puppet. Right. I have radical More ideas. More weed. <laughs> More weed party. You can do anything you want. Oh, I thought I you'd like care. Tina. Oh, I was so wrong. No. <laughs> Being well, I wanted the job. Yeah, it was be great. Patrick wanted the job. So oh, oh, yeah. oh, I was oh. campaigning, yes. Yeah. No bike lanes and... Full tolerance of teenage smoking and all kinds of good <laughs> other good ideas. Lots of good ideas. Get rid of that cigarette tax. Uh, well, yeah, that would. It, yeah, let's make. Oh wait, you're a lefty. You love tax. Let's I'm make sorry. cigarettes more reasonably priced for teenagers. Just <laughs> right. Right. Oh, are you under eighteen? <laughs> a teenage tax exemption. Yes. Okay. For cigarettes. Right. Yes. <laughs> Firefighters. Call. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing that heart warms my heart in the last several months than when I was driving down Douglas Drive or Winnetka and saw the youth from Cooper walking down the street in about two and it was multicultural, you know. Mm -hmm. Multi ethnic, blacks, whites, Asians, all having heaters. I thought this is <laughs> this is what makes this, America great. This is what can unite <laughs> the right. youth of America. Cigarettes <laughs> can we all got along much better when we smoked together on the side of the school. When we smoked together and didn't have the internet. A much better country. Right. <laughs> and when I went to Cooper Patrick, you still had to do it in the John. <laughs> Firefighters. Well, these, these kids were going for lunch. They were about two blocks away, but they were. Firefighters called to a fire at a mobile home park in Lake Elmo last night. Authorities said the fire occurred at Cimarron Mobile Home Park. Major damage to at least one mobile home. Space heater? No, a turkey fryer oh, on the deck. Of course. Oh, <laughs> the guy was practicing for Christmas, huh? Um, taking a run at it. Yeah. Authorities have not yet said whether anybody was uh, serious. You need a license for those things, don't you? Because if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to burn your house down. No, you need to have common sense. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I lived in a trailer for uh, about a year with the, uh, maybe not quite that long, with the family in St. Cloud. Right. And you got the you got the bedroom in the back, right? <laughs> I've seen got, a trailer that's propped up on three yeah. sides. <laughs> you get back to you one corner the, no, you and the, the whole you got thing the bedroom lifts up. up. You got the bedroom in the back. Right, right. Yeah. And then you got the, yeah. and then you got. We're the, all saying right, like got, we know. Then you got the little bedroom for the baby, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then yeah. in between, you got that heater. Yes. Yeah. Going, yes. Yes. Trying to keep this thing warm in a Minnesota winter. Yeah. Every night you go to bed, you know, and you say, there's you, about a 20% yeah. chance none of us are going to wake up. None of us are going to wake up. Maybe we should crack a window. <laughs> yeah, screw it. Yeah. It's too cold. <laughs> yeah, if the fumes don't get us, the flames will. I, you know. well, well, let's take it. a vote. <laughs> 
couple of music stories today. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees yes. were announced this morning. All right. Too, uh, bad, too bad the mayor isn't yeah. here to complain. No, Kenny will take care well, of this He's one got the worst it. taste in musical history anyway. So. <laughs> the Cars. Dire, yes, I'll the, take the Cars. Kenny doesn't like the Cars. No, I love the Cars. Love, love the, the Cars. cars. Yeah. cars are great. Dire Straits. Yes. Definitely. Moody Blues. No. Kenny doesn't like the Moody What's wrong with the Moody Blues? Uh, you got to put them in, though. They Dumb, burnt-out hippies. Is, <laughs> as huge as they were, I'm shocked it's taken this long, actually. If you, if you take out all the dumb, burnt-out hippies, <laughs> the room's going to get Who's left? Who's left? Yeah, that's true. Uh, why did it take so long for the Moody Blues? Well, they were never critics, darling, they so stink, that's probably that's why. why. Yeah. Well, I know, but they are they were enormously <laughs> large. You but don't need but another 20-minute trippy song. But popularity isn't the thing with this, except this year, as we'll see in a moment. Okay. <laughs> Sister Rosetta Tharp. Uh, Who's that? Who is that? She's a, uh, sounds she like a blues singer She to was me. an early blues and gospel singer. Oh, yeah. She's got to go in. I bet she was good. Really good guitarist also. Was she big? Was she a big girl? Uh, she was a big girl. That's, so that's even more yeah. important. That's, that's uh, was well, she a big gal? Two <laughs> bills. They were always better if they waved two bills, the blues singers. Uh, Nina Simone. Oh, absolutely. Oh. She goes in. And... Bon Jovi. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> well, what do you We're expect? gonna have to face it though. He's gonna go in someday, whether we like yeah, it or not. Right. Well, oh, yeah. he, he went in. He, in. These guys are going in. These mm. are not nominees. These people mm. are inducted. They're We're living going. on a prayer. Let's mm -hmm. just put it all behind us. <laughs> these, Look forward to next year. <laughs> these six inductees chosen from a group of nineteen. You nominees. know what is the worst part of this? Poor Cleveland. They win the bidding. Yeah. They get the Rock and Roll mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. And then they make them do the awards ceremony in New York. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 They won't even go to Cleveland for the awards right. ceremony. I thought about that. What a bunch of... Hey, John, is one. Big Mama Thornton in the uh, hall? She should uh, be She's got to be. She yes. better be. Yeah. Definitely. I'm sure she is. Uh, one other music note. The front man for one of my favorite 90s bands has died. Ooh. Lead singer and songwriter of the Smithereens. Oh, no. Pat Denizio is dead at no. the age of 62. What killed him? We don't know. They're not announcing the cause of death. Did bon Jovi have... going into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah. That's That's funny. Funny. Did he have some hijinks in his life? Did he live a uh, hard lifestyle? They weren't uh, noted for their hard lifestyle. Okay. No. I saw those dummies a few times. Great yeah. band. Yeah, Love great that band. band. Yep. Yeah. Denizio posted several days ago he was hopeful of getting back on tour as he continued physical therapy for neck and back injuries at a farmhouse he's restoring in New Jersey. Wow. Would you watch them at, like, First Ave, Ken? Uh, just shut up, Chris. <laughs> Band members said uh, the journey with Pat was long, storied, and a hell, hell of a lot of fun. They said uh, they wrote, Pat had the magic touch. He channeled the essence of joy and heartbreak into hook-laden three-minute pop songs infused with a lifelong well, you passion can't die for, for rock sore back. and roll. What the hell killed him? He you had can't taken die from a sore back. He had taken several falls. I read earlier this morning, but it didn't say what the falls were from. Oh, okay. He was a normal-looking guy in normal shape. I don't know, mm -hmm. why, you know huh. why he would have fallen, but uh, that's how he got the neck and back injury. What, what's normal so, looking? You work in a radio well, station. Right? Good, good point. point. Good what's point, normal? <laughs> <laughs> Should have thought of that before I said. Looked that. better <laughs> than uh, Ozzy Osbourne. He looked normal. Yeah, he looked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, better, in better shape. Than that's, Ozzy. that's like Iggy Pop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh that's good. <laughs> yeah. All right, Johnny. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, coming soon to the Regal Theater Company, Cheetos Popcorn. What? What? Cheetos Popcorn. What, it, what is Cheetos popcorn? Are they bringing to their just cheesy popcorn, right? Well, it, it's there's oh. more more to it than that. Okay. Yeah. It will have the Cheetos dust all over the popcorn. Okay. And then mixed in, you'll have crunchy Cheetos pieces mm. in a giant 32 ounce container. I'm going to charge you about 14 bucks for I'm going to get uh, some of that in my beard. Well, that's I'm going to tell you right now, my <laughs> beard is going to be full of that. Crap. I don't like Cheetos. I'm not a Cheeto guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll eat a bag of Cheetos. God, what do you do with your hand? Your oh, hand's yeah. all orange. Yeah, that's the you trouble. Lick what do you lick it off. Do with your hand? <laughs> oh, man. What are you, on American? <laughs> <laughs> well, then your tongue gets orange. It just doesn't work. Right. Okay. Uh, the company previously has collaborated with fast food giant Burger King to create Mac and Cheetos. Mm -hmm. Also collaborated with Chuck E. Cheese's to make a Cheetos topped pizza. Mm -hmm. And they, of course, hosted their own popular pop up restaurant last year in New York City. Although Cheetos popcorn's been previously trialed at various theater locations, Regal Cinema is the first movie theater chain to offer the cheesy snack at the national level. What do you guys feel about Doritos? 
Anybody I'm pro. A Doritos get you pro? I'm pro Doritos. I'm uh, pro Doritos. I like the, uh, uh, what, what's the blue bag? Cool Not the ranch. red bag. The cool, cool ranch. ranch. Cool ranch. Cool ranch. Okay. Cool ranch. Okay. I but like I, the, Cheetos uh, over Doritos any day. Uh, mm-hmm. I like Doritos dipped in hot sauce, and, but mm-hmm. I never eat it anymore for obvious okay. reasons. Okay. But, yeah, oh, yeah. Good. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Chris? Oh. Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear the How joke? About of, you, Dan, you're not a Doritos guy. All right, I'd take Cheetos over Doritos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you ever hear the joke about the guy that went to see the doctor because his swimsuit area was orange? <laughs> Eating too I think I'll tell, you you I'll, tell you I'll tell you off the year. I'll tell you No, well, I, you don't think you got to tell me. I can okay, take it. You got it. I can't can deduct. You, what you played it out already in your mind. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Fresh bag of Cheetos is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there is virtually no vinyl record in history more sought after by collectors than a genuine copy of Prince's Black Album. Warner Brothers pressed 500,000 of them. Overrated. No, I, I, I believe hang that. Hang on, and it's been that way since it came out. Well, here's the deal. Uh, they pressed 500,000 copies of the album in late 1987, but yeah. that's when Prince got religious and he wanted them all immediately destroyed. Yeah, it's it's uh, vile. The, it's, uh, real, it's real naughty. Yeah, it's it's a very good album. Though. Oh, it is, yes. Uh, it came out on CD in late 1994, but by then, uh, we thought all of the vinyl had been uh, destroyed. Mm-hmm. In fact, only three American copies from the original 87 vinyl pressing have surfaced in the past 30 years. Wow. Jeff Gold's a former Warner Brothers executive vice president who runs a music memorabilia store called Record Mecca, said it's easily one of the rarest records in the world. So he was skeptical earlier this month when he got an email inquiry about the value of a sealed black album. He said he assumed it was fake. But once he realized he was corresponding with someone he remembered from his days at Warner Brothers, he knew they had the genuine item. The story he got from the old colleague, he said it turned out the man's daughter had purchased her first turntable at the time, asked him to send her some records. He looked uh, looked through boxes that had been in the closet for 25 years and found two sealed Warner Brothers mailers, Wow, five copies of Prince's Black Album no in kidding. pristine condition. Hey, Johnny, what's the name of the uh, le- record store, the famous one in, the fetus? in, in near South Minneapolis? The yeah, Fetus? Electric, electric Fetus. fetus. Electric fetus they yeah. say they might go out of business now that Bud Armstrong is no longer with us. I guess, I <laughs> guess Bud has lot, a huh? fantastic vinyl <laughs> collection. <laughs> had a, had a, Fantastic vinyl it's collection. It's made a bit of a resurgence in uh, recent years. What are those albums worth, John, those black albums? Well, uh, three of them were sent to gold to sell for $15,000 each. He said he sold the first one with one single phone call to a client, and he says he's sure the other two will sell very quickly. He said the executive is keeping one, and he's thinking about selling another one at auction. Doesn't that seem year. low? Oh, that's what 000? I kind of thought. Fifteen grand? Yeah. I mean, if this is only, what, the fourth to surface? Well, the, there's five of these, so there'll be eight total because okay. there was three. Right. So hmm. uh, uh, although Gold uh, got his hands on these, he says he's now looking for a Prince record called Camille. He said there was only two test pressings of that one. Never heard of it. Yeah, I haven't either. How are we doing with the uh, with the uh, probate on uh, the little fella? Are we still fighting with each other? Every... every uh, Every woman of proper, every child of proper age in the Twin Cities still claims to be his offspring. The uh, judge uh, said uh, who the offspring were. That's oh, we, we, that's we, done. Yeah, I think there were what five. That's uh, all. Five, I think five. Well, I don't remember the exact. Number. Out of the seven hundred and fifty thousand that claimed to be his child, <laughs> now they're they're worried though about. Uh, they moved all of his stuff to California, the stuff he had in vaults. So okay. now everybody's suing to try to get it back here. Oh, my goodness. Family members because the bank. There's going to be nothing it. left by oh, the time lawyers are done. Man. It's just a, it's a mess. Yeah. He sure was short. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes. The little yeah. guy. Goodness. <laughs> yes, he was. 5'2"? What? what do you think? Wow. Yeah, I think 5'2". Uh, <laughs> Anderson. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Henderson County, uh, North being closer to the ground make you a better guitar player. The guy was a no, monster no. musician. Yes, he, was. he was a genius songwriter. Yeah. Just being sure was closer short. to the ground make you a better musician. You know, John. Yes. I was just thinking the guy died at sixty-two from the smithereens. smithereens Aren't yeah. you glad you were never a highly successful musician? Oh, you'd be toast. <laughs> yeah, I'd if be you done. make it to sixty-two, it's oh, a miracle. Yeah, yeah. I'd be done. <laughs> Henderson County, North Carolina Sheriff Charles McDonald has released a statement regarding an image circulated in his department that made a joke about the drug Narcan. Narcan, of course, the one that uh, can bring you back to life if you suffer an overdose. Mm -hmm. The image 
uh, contains text that said Narcon has been, quote, robbing Darwin of his bountiful <laughs> harvest since 1971. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny. The anonymous sender told the station, the sheriff thinks this opioid crisis is funny, apparently, and he thinks these deaths are funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. The image taken from a May 23rd interdepartmental email of crime analysis information uh, contained what uh, the sheriff calls a tasteless attempt at humor. His statement said regarding this offensive slide, there's no excuse for it regardless of the intention. I'm told it was an attempt at dark humor and we are sorry. Fairfax County police say a man stripped off his clothes and jumped on a passing vehicle after a road accident near Washington Dulles International Airport. Statement from the Fairfax County Police Department said it all occurred Tuesday afternoon right in the middle of rush hour, caused major traffic delays. The man wasn't immediately identified. He now faces multiple charges. Officials say the naked suspect was found on the airport property after fleeing the accident scene, running away, of Why, course. Uh, why'd he take his clothes off, John? I, I don't know. He's Bored. Hot, maybe. Was it like Ricky Bobby, where he thought he was on fire and <laughs> he take all his clothes off? You know what's weird about that scene? He kept the helmet on. I know. He awesome. stripped the clothes off who and played, kept the helmet on. Who played Dad in that movie? Who's the guy that played Oh, it was Dad? the same guy from Office Space. No. no. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. He was. It was the guy uh, that ran the office. Yeah, office Gary, uh, Gary Cole, right? Gary, Is that his name? Yeah. Gary Cole. He was, right? okay. <laughs> he was yeah. fantastic. He had the panther in the car. He was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a weird problem in Slovenia. If you're not first, you're last. You're last. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, weird problem uh, Slo- in Slovenia, the country, their state intelligence agency. Still, oh, let's try that again. Yeah. Hey, Slovenia. take two. Intelligence. Kenny's leaving. He's had enough. State intelligence agency employees are going on strike. That includes all the spies. Really, the spies. The are spies going are going. <laughs> and spying on is very strike. important there because you got six countries and like twenty feet each. Do you others. do you hire temporary spies then? Do yeah. you hi- scab, call it temp scab, agency? Scab, spies. Yeah. Yeah. Scabbers. I'll tell you, Yugoslavia had a lot better basketball team when it was just Yugoslavia <laughs> instead of having six different countries. You know, bring back Yugoslavia. Right. Marshall Tito was underrated. <laughs> Marshall Tito. <laughs> All right, Johnny. Thank you. You bet. Uh, we'll have quite a football doubleheader in the uh, 5 o'clock hour. Herm Edwards and Rich Gannon. Uh, Rich is usually with us on Tuesdays, but uh, due to the sports fantasy auction and when we raised over $48,000 for Courage Kenny, uh, we'll uh, talk to Rich today. Uh, so uh, so Herm, don't think it's Tuesday when you hear no, that. Yeah, don't. Uh, don't get confused. It uh, is Wednesday. Uh, I might get confused, but uh, don't you uh, allow yourself to get confused. <laughs> I think and that's all part also, of your bit. Uh, the Red Hot Wild uh, win again. The four uh, overtime victories in their last five games. This was a shootout, but four extra frame uh, victories in their we last five We watched and games. we're very happy in and my home. And Jess Myers and I will discuss that on the Hockey Half Hour at 4.30. Sounds like an action-packed ride. 1,500 ESPN is KSTP. St. Paul, Minneapolis, 